Hello and welcome to another Wolf Time Gaming video. Today we're going to be doing some more Burrows and Badgers painting and we're going to be looking at the Bulldog. He's just at the back of the uh, the screen there. He's the big guy with the shield. Absolutely amazing sculpt. Um, fantastic model. He's really big as well. I'll put some of my mice next to him and he looks absolutely massive. Uh, but let's get the kettle on and we'll get started. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I've um, sped this up again and given a bit of a time lapse video uh, just so you don't get really bored uh, as I'm painting it really. But to start off, it's got uh, so I base coated everything in white, just a white white rattle can, uh, nice and easy. Spray it all. Um, and don't don't obviously go too thick, uh, but yeah, it gives you a nice nice base coat to actually work off. And the first thing I did was go, actually go over with white scar on his uh, on on the actual. Uh, clothing over the top of his armor um you'll see why a little bit later i've got a shot at the end showing uh, him with his forces uh, next next step with the bulldog was the uh, zandra dust um again zandra dust absolutely fantastic color I always always put zandra dust on one of my models um and the, this one's no exception really because he's like bulldogs are naturally tan and white so it's, it's ideal for, for the actual uh, model itself. Uh, so I, I copied again a photo of a uh, of a bulldog, basically. So you got the white down the middle of uh, his head there. Um, just to highlight the Xander Dust as well, I did use a little bit of a shab, a shab to bone. Um, all Citadel miniature paints, these ones. Uh, so a shab to bone just over the top there, just to give it a bit of a highlight. And then moved on to a bad and black, uh, just to go into the nose, really, just so he's got... Uh, black nose and around the mouth um, bulldogs tend to have like a snarly sort of mouth so I went into into his mouth and uh, around sort of his lips and things just to give him that more like darker snarl um, look to him and I highlighted that a little bit later as well and I also painted the shield black as well which I've done with the with the other knights I've got from burrows and badges as well uh, so the actual shield itself um, is black um, I then went and, and highlighted the shield in the next step as well um with the uh gr with a gray paint um dawnstone but you'll see that in a in a moment um just to just to finish off the eyes uh, I, I did actually go back and, and put a little bit of white scar into the eyes here um just so i can uh, get that down while everything else was drying and i just put a little black dot essentially in the middle of the iris uh, which i'm actually working on now and you can see i was like trying to get that perfect essentially the paint on the rest of it wasn't still dry so i moved on to corn red for his, he's got like a little money pouch type thing or well, i'm saying it's a money pouch anyway just on his belt so i went with reds for this um started with a corn red uh, then highlighted with mephiston red and a final uh, just little layer paint of evil sun scarlet as well just to really make that pop um, from the rest of the model so one bit of the the model that's actually quite bright as well um so at that point uh, i actually moved on to these belts which is rhinox hide um rhinox hide sort of my standard really for for doing any sort of leather work any browns and things i always start with rhinox hide and then go up from there so you just have to really take your time with this uh, especially seeing as you, you had like his um a sort of jacket type thing on there and I wanted it white I mean I, though I, I could uh, go, go over it after but obviously that's not ideal so you just have to really take your time with this one um, so yeah I did that that part there I also just got like a satchel as well that's just sat just underneath the shield so uh, painted that exactly the same really wanted to stick with it a lot of people use lots of different sorts of browns to pick out different sort of belts and things like that but I always start with Rhinox Hyde as a base and then change things from there essentially at this point, I came back to the shield and did the dawnstone as I really as I early uh, alluded to. So I got just got a little bit of dawnstone and uh, gave it a, 
a quick dry brush just around the edges to, to highlight the edges of the shield. I then moved on to um, Macaridge Blue and again another Citadel paint just on the for like the fleur de lis on his shield. I, I coated the whole thing. He's got like a wolf symbol in the middle of the, his fleur de lis as well. But I coated essentially the whole thing with the blue. Um, and then I went back over it after, uh, which which we'll go on to in a moment. Um, Macaridge Blue is quite a deep blue. It's quite a dark blue. It's quite nice. Uh, I then did like a crown just above that with Retributor armor. Um, it's the paint I use for my Custos if you watch those videos uh, in the past. And then highlighted the blues uh, firstly with Altdorf Guard blue. I just went over the top essentially and highlighted that. And I did finish it off with a little bit of Calgar blue just on the edges. Um, then went back over the, over the Rhinox hide onto the belts. Uh, to do that I used Mournfang brown. Um, again just got to be really careful. Just cut, try and get the edges. Don't go too mad with this because essentially it'll, it just lightens it a little bit too much. Much. Um, but then you've got like a, a, a bit of variation with the browns. Uh, I then moved on to Lead Belcher, quite a long process this one was, all his armour piece, uh, pieces, so just went over the whole model essentially, giving a, a coat of every every piece of armour, um, just completely coated it all, um, it, and then to essentially darken all that down, uh, I used the, the Null Noil uh, on that, which is a game from Citadel, just to give it sort of a darker uh, feel, and it adds to the highlights after, so you could just put, like, literally coat uh, every piece of metal with, with that there. I then went, moved back to the, the golden retributor armor just to pick out that wolf head just in the middle of the fleur de lis. Nice and easy sort of a, a thing just to point out. And I went around the armor and just picked out a couple of little points on the armor that I thought might be a little bit more decorative. Um, it, just, to, just to really make it a little bit more interesting, I suppose. While the no no will shade it, it was all still silver, so I wanted to highlight something else as well. Uh, this is a process where I went on the no oil. Essentially, I coated the whole model. In Null Noil, um, I went over the whole thing, started with the armour and that was dry, and then I decided just to go uh, over the whole thing and include the, the actual jacket and everything as well. Going back over that then, uh, you need to bring that those colours back up, or, or at least the raised areas, so I went over it with the white. Um, again, just to just picking out all the all the raised areas of his sort of uh, of the material part of uh, of his clothing, and then that that way it just adds naturally adds the shading into the the recessed parts where the null oil is settled. Um, with the silver as well, you can do that with um, with lead belcher, or you could use another silver just to highlight that. I didn't in this instance because I liked it quite dark um, and dingy. I thought it looked quite effective. Um, as well, there are bits on the the head you could highlight as well, bits of the the hands. Uh, just on the knuckles, just essentially going back and using exactly the same colours as before, because the null oil, oil will essentially darken the whole model down. So it's essentially bringing it back up to the colour you originally painted, but only on the raised areas, which means it adds that dynamic sort of a uh, depth to all the to all the, like the crevices and creases in uh, every part of the model. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy it. You can see here I'm just highlighting the white on his head again, uh, just to really bring that colour back up because it went a little bit too dark. So I turned almost a brownie sort of a colour. Um, then we moved on to the base. I used Corvus Black for the, the actual rocks themselves. Um, went over it with Dawnstone, a quick dry brush with Dawnstone. And finally picked out the, the last little details with Celestra Grey uh, just on the rocks. Nice and easy, all dry brushing really, uh, once you've got that... Um, the original colour at the bottom. You see it's literally just a really fast process. If you want to learn about dry brushing there is another video I've got on there. Um, and then for the for the base again I use Rhinox Hide just because I had it sat on my desk. Uh, it's an easy colour to go for. I did the same with the, the Border Collie and the Red Kite as well. Um, it's it's a decent colour to go with and with these because I'm putting a lot of flock down and stuff it doesn't really matter which, which brown you go with uh, as long as you do basic because obviously it'd show up through the bottom of the flock if you didn't um, and it just shows any missing areas with the flock uh, so around the bases I always I always go with black uh, on every model I do I never really go with any other colors whenever I do I, I always end up changing it because I don't like it I think the black really frames the whole model itself um, and, and looks quite effective to do that I use the Abaddon black uh, I've got some old Abaddon black that uh, essentially I'm using for basing at the moment so I just coated that um, and I think it really does add that little bit to it finally it was basing itself so it's lo lots of flock few little bits of um, uh, tufts that I've got lying around, a bit of clump foliage, and and there we have it. The only bit that I really didn't show you because you can't really see on the on the the time lapse is the the mouth there. 
So to do that, I just went over each individual tooth with a tiny little bit of, of white scar after I put the non oil on, which then made it stand out. I also used a little bit of screamer pink as well, um, just to highlight the like his snarly mouth, like he's 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 angry sort of thing. Uh, well, I think he's an absolutely amazing model. Uh, I hope you agree. He's absolutely fantastic. I really really enjoyed painting him. Um, Make sure you like the video guys, if you do, comment down below what, what you think of him, what you think of what we're doing so far um, as part of Wolf Time Gaming. We're, we are a, a father and son's team, so we're just playing around really with the with video editing and things. Uh, make sure you subscribe as well to see any future videos. But you can see you've got, you've got the King's Guard there, all painted in a very, very similar style. Uh, lots of whites and blues, blacks, yellows. Um, I, I love these. Uh, but that's essentially this little war band finish. It's probably not. We're going to get more, but there we go. Uh, but make sure you subscribe to see any future videos, and I'll see you in the next one.